Hoping to play Saturday? I mean, I'm always hoping to play, you know. Uh, I don't know what's going to happen. It's a coach's decision, but uh, I'm always ready, you know. Uh, I'm always uh, ready to play, and obviously being in front of the uh, 12s is always great, so um, we'll see what happens. How weird is that when they tell you to shut it down when you're already dressed, ready to go? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I think for me, uh, I always just get mentally prepared to go, uh, obviously, um, in the preseason and everything else. And then, uh, you know, I do my pregame warm up. Uh, I did a little extra after, I, normally out there for a good couple hours pregame. And then I did a little bit extra with DK, just me and him uh, on the field. So I felt like I got my game reps in, you know. Um, we got a bunch of extra reps in, probably 15, 20 extra reps after. So um, I, feel, I feel good, you know. And then throughout the game, I'm always playing the game as if I'm out there, you know. So. Um, physically not being out there is, is one thing, but to mentally get the reps is the most important thing, really, to be honest with you. And to be, be there and see, uh, have the crowd there in Vegas and all that and to hear, all, hear it all and feel it all and get, the, get your emotions going. I, I, think, uh, you know, I think to prepare your mind to win, prepare your mind to play is such a critical part to, to it all. And uh, that's the best part. And so if you can master that part of it, you give yourself a great chance. Yeah, when you're ready. When you had the headset on, what did you learn about how Shane rolled in the game? Uh, he's super clear, um, ready to roll. Uh, Shane, um, he's uh, he's uh, really focused out there. You know, he's he's really calm. Um, you know, he's very calm on the headset. You know, we, we we had the mock game, which I got to experience that obviously, and then obviously out here we try to simulate game situations all the time. So it felt just like we've been practicing. How is it having Dwayne Eskridge back out this week? Uh, having D. Eskridge out there is huge. You know, he's, you know, every morning I get out here, uh, we get out here, I walk on the field around 5, 45, 6 o'clock, and me and him just go through plays for 45 minutes to an hour. Um, it's, uh, they're still due on the, on the grass, you know. It's, um, but it's, uh, it's good just to go through the plays and really visualize it and um, to go through everything mentally, to focus on it. He's, he's a really smart player. Uh, he's physical as can be. So to see you know, why we drafted him, I, I knew why, but to be out here with him, for, you know, first first couple of days has been really cool to see. How, how many is that players? learning process going for him? I know, you know he mentioned that that's kind of going to be the biggest thing. <clears throat> well, I think for any player, you know, it's especially for a rookie, it's always, that's always the most challenging part. That and the physical part, you know, it's a long season, but um, he's been doing a really great job. And we, like I said, we've been spending so much extra class time together out in the field, like real reps out in the field, running through every situation, every play. Um, from top to bottom, you know, and uh, he's doing a tremendous job with it. So I have tremendous confidence in what he's doing and D. Eskridge and uh, super excited about him. How many guys are here at that point? When you're working with Eskridge on the field, how many other players are here that early in the morning? Um, out here on the field? Or, or just in general? Um, there's, a, there's, there's a few others. Uh, Bobby's, Bobby and I are always here. Uh, there's a few other guys um, that, that are here um, that come in, you know, and, you know, I, I think that for me, I always try to be, you know, I'm always an early bird person and, and late night too. I don't, I don't sleep much. So, um, but it's cool just having that quiet time. You know, the quiet time of being out in the field. Um, you know, uh, the sun just came up by about an hour before, and it's you know it's quiet out here. And just to be able to go through everything, sense the stadium. You know, visualize that you're there. Visualize you're in those reps and plays. It's it's pretty cool. Um, and then you know, uh, my guy Bobby, while we're doing it, he's always, he's up out here uh, getting his jump ropes in or whatever he may be doing out here. And it's pretty cool. You know, and so. Um, but just having that quiet time, just um, going through, visualizing success, visualizing the plays, I think it's really important. That's your first time working with uh, Rover this offseason? Yeah, uh, I started working with him uh, like mid-February probably, uh, you know, late February, I would say, somewhere, somewhere around there. What prompted that? Um, you know, I, I think I have a mission to, to win uh, and win often. Um, you know, and I think that, you know, every day I wake up, you know, I want to, you know, I want to be surrounded around the best. Um, I have a great performance team, too, as well. And, um, you know, some great people that help me along the way every day. Um, and I think Tim, obviously, being around Michael Jordan, being around Kobe, uh, you know, he's, he's helped, you know, prepare them every day, you know, for, for, the, for the long haul and what they want to do and, and everything else. So I think, I think longevity is always important to me. I think um, the mental side of things has always been, probably number one um, and I would say you know the physical part of it too and, and I think that for me you know I, I think being surrounded around greatness is always really important you know and always feeling that every day and and uh, so our performance team we had a great off season I mean, it was good I, I feel feel stronger I feel faster I feel more prepared than ever um, you know and uh, and uh, I just feel I feel ready to play re ready to win what type of stuff were you and Tim working on well that's the secret <laughs> you know but uh but I think everything's around, around uh, you know, trying to be, um, you know, obviously 
fast, quick, all that kind of stuff. But I think being, you know, I, I play in chaotic, chaotic situations. So, uh, you know, it's just, that's just the name of the game, right? And, just, um, and so trying to simulate that as much as possible. And then, you know, making everything hard, making everything difficult mentally, physically, everything else. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the core of it. Where do you feel like the offense is in terms of implementing Shane's offense and, and all that right now? I, mean, I guess that would be the thing it's coming here pretty much. I think we're doing a great job. I think that um, <clears throat> there's a couple things we have to tune up here and there, but I think we're going we're gonna to be really excellent on offense. I think we're going to be able to move the ball really well. We have great confidence in what we're doing, me and Shane on the same page. Um, you know, we, we have a great sense of what we're trying to do and how we're trying to do it. Um, we're trying to put ourselves in the toughest positions possible um, in, in certain series, certain, certain plays and everything else. And, um, it's good. It's good. It's a good reps. Our defense looks great too. So we're gonna have a really good football team this year. We're excited about it, and uh, we're excited about what we can do and how we're gonna do it. Um, we got to do it together, and it's gonna be fun. I think Shane's gonna be great in it. Russ, when, when Nick Ballor is helping out on defense, playing linebacker, he said people call him a spy. Does that give him an unfair advantage that, <laughs> that he knows the offense? He's out there taking defenses. Yeah, Nick Nick Ballor knows everything. He knows all the plays. He knows it on offense. He knows uh So it's uh, we we gotta we gotta do some fake calls for him sometimes when he's in there. You know, he's um, no, he's doing a great job. The fact that he can play, you know, when I first played Ballor, he was actually a defensive player. Um, so I remember playing against him uh, back in the day and stuff like that. So uh, he knows what he's doing on defense. He's a good football player. To have a guy like that that can play both sides of the football, it just gives him credit to. You gotta give him credit for what he can do on offense and defense. Uh, you know, he's. Definitely the funniest guy on the team, but he is also one of the hardest working guys on the team. He's he's in here every day, grinding, putting the work in. And that's what you love about him. Hey, what have you learned about uh, Gerald Everett so far, being around him, and how's he fitting? Oh, Gerald's super elusive. He keeps getting open, and he, you guys see him out here. He saw the deep deep ball he caught today. That was great. Uh, he keeps getting open on second and third down. He just finds a way to make plays. Um, he's been exceptional for us, and I got great confidence in him what he's doing. Um, he knows the offense, you know, uh, obviously um, from some of the stuff Shane's done, but also he's just been working at it, you know, together. He came down to San Diego. We spent some time together, uh, spent a lot of quality time together, and, and uh, he's been really, really working at his game. So he, he's got a great, he's got a great skill set. At what point, Russ, does it get uncomfortable for you that Dwayne Brown's not on your line? Well, I think anytime Dwayne's not out there, you know, it's, uh, yes, you know, you, you always want your, your star left tackle out there, you know, um, you know, so. You know, just trusting the process, hoping that it, it, it works out, you know, because we, we definitely need him. That would that, be huge for us. Um, he's been one of the best in the game, obviously. But I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll get figured out and worked out. You know, that's what I'm hoping for and, and, and wanting. And, and that, is he old enough that he doesn't need much time to practice? He could come in the week of the Colts game and start in your mind. Well, it's, yeah, I think that Dwayne's a guy that um, he's the, probably the most physically fit guy on our team. You know, just he's not. You know, he's he's so athletic. You know, he's he. You know, he used to play I think tight end in high school. You know, he's a guy who is a really athletic player. You know, he can really run. He gets out, he gets out of his stance really well. Uh, he's super strong. I mean, the guy's doing like 20, 20 pull ups in here. You know, and at his size to do twenty pull ups is crazy. And he'll do like three sets of them with with a weighted vest on sometimes. You know, so he he can do it all. I mean, I think that the thing about Dwayne is. Um, you know he's really cerebral. He understands the game, and uh, you know he's he's our he's our leader up front. He's one of those guys that can really you know uh, demonstrate the game how how the game's supposed to be played. So um, yeah, I, I think it's going to work out. That's what I'm hoping for, and that's what that's what uh, that's what I'm looking forward to. Brandon uh, Shell mentioned that he, you texted all the offensive linemen in February after your remarks. What were you hoping to accomplish? Second. Uh, what were you hoping to accomplish by texting all the guys? Well, I think first of all. Uh, you know, it's private conversations, you know, but, um, you know, I think more than anything else is uh, we got, I got to talk to a good amount of guys on the phone. Some guys were traveling, all that stuff. But, um, you know, some of it was just letting the guys know that, you know, we want to win and do everything we can and be a part of it. And just, you know, it's just part of the process, you know, and, and I think that, uh, you know, everybody knows that, you know, I'm, the, I'm there for them and vice versa, you know. And so it's always been uh, we have great relationships up front and uh, it's been great, you know. So I'm excited about this season. I'm excited about. Uh, what a guy like Brandon Shell can do. I'm excited about what uh, Gabe Jackson can do. You know, obviously we got a competition with Kyle and, and Posick. Both of those guys are really athletic, good players. Um, yeah, D. Lou, his rookie year last year was phenomenal. Um, you know, and, and now he's moving to left guard. He's got great confidence. And then, um, you know, obviously Dwayne with what kind of player he, he is. And then I think Stone, he's been working his butt off too, trying to get the system and learn everything. And he's, got, he's playing one of the toughest positions in football. So he's doing a good job. There's been a lot of attention on uh, DK from the track and the softball stuff. He's just his profile is higher than what it used to be. 
How have you seen him handle the extra attention that's been on him? Um, I, th I think DK is a superstar, and you know, I think that, and, and I mean that in the, in the greatest way possible. I mean, I think he's God's given him an amazing gift to do so many things. Why limited it? You know, I, I'm a big believer in not limiting who you are and what God gave you. You know, it's, it's so funny because a lot of times people would tell you just be one way, be one way, and then, or you know, and get prepared for life after football and everything else. Um, because it only lasts for a couple of years, and then when people have success, they want you to oh, just do that, you know, and only do that, you know. So it's funny. It's, the paradox is hilarious, but I think that you know, with DK being just the thing about a guy who ran ten three six, and he was leading, you know, he wasn't like he wasn't like he was behind and caught up or anything like that. He he was leading the whole way, almost like probably three quarters of the way, he had a chance, you know. So just think about, um, you know, you know, he's he's a humble guy. He's a guy who wants to be great. He puts the work in. Um, you know, he, des he deserves success. He deserves all the things he works for. Uh, and uh, he's a great friend, uh, one of my best friends. And uh, he's like a little brother to me. You know, we have a lot of conversations, a lot of talks about a lot of things. And, uh, I got, you know, I hold him in high regard, you know. Um, and so uh, he's going to have a great year. And uh, we're really looking forward to him playing great. Russell, you talked a little bit about this, but what have you seen from the defense in the end of the yeah, well, the defense has been really great. I think the addition of Al Woods has been really tremendous just because you got so much depth um, up front, especially in the interior spots. You got Puna, you got Monet, you got you know Big Al, you got so many different guys up there. And then on, on the edges, you know, you got Dunlap, Vincent Mayoa, uh, you got DT coming off the edge now. You know, you got a lot of good players. I think our linebackers, you know, they're so fast. You know, obviously, you know, uh, you know the leader in you know in the pin, obviously with with. Uh, with Bobby, you know, it doesn't get any better than him. Um, and then Brooks has really developed and really gotten, you know, just better and better and better at, at, at the game. Uh, I think being next to Bobby always helps. Um, and then I think on the secondary, you know, there's so many guys that are coming in and out playing a great job. I think Witherspoon's done a tremendous job. Obviously, DJ Reed's been dinged up, but guys like Flowers and those guys, they're great football players. They've played a lot of football. Um, and then in the secondary, Diggs is one of the best, you know, free safeties in the game. He's a hard hitter. Um, he sees the game. He processes things. Um, Ryan Neal to be able to step in like he did last year. I remember the Miami game. Just think about how great he was in that in that game. So many games, game after game after game. So we trust in his ability. And then uh, to get Jamal Adams signed uh, was such a huge thing, you know, um, because you know he's 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 a star in this game. He's a superstar. He knows how to how to play the game. He's so fast. He's electric. Um, he's a great uh, locker room guy. He brings all the energy. Um, he. He's uh, as good as it gets, you know. He's going to be one of the best of all time uh, because of because of his ability to play the game at that position. Uh, he's a true factor. Um, anytime you have a, anytime you're playing teams or going against guys, defenses, offenses, whatever, you want to know their impact players and are they really factors? You know, do they change the game if they're not there? Um, and he's one of those guys that changes the game when he is there. And uh, I think it's I think it's really special that, he, that that we have him on our football team for another four plus years. How meaningful was that to you to see them kind of make that commitment to tomorrow? Well, I think that was huge, you know, just to be able to get a guy like that and um, to be a part of our team. You know, Joe Mall is a great friend. You know, we've, we've talked a bunch and just uh, he's been uh, super focused along the way, getting ready. Um, you know, we knew that was going to happen, just, you know, what timing and all that. Uh, and so um, he's been great along the way. He's been in every meeting, been prepared. He sits right in the front of the room, we sit right next to each other, me, Witherspoon, Cody Barton, the guys. We sit right out there in front. He's always ready. Um, you know, so he's been tuned in the whole time. So. Um, and then the first day he comes out here, he's blitzing off the edge, he's making play, you know, so it's, it's fun. What have you thought of having Shed on the coaching staff? To have Shed on there, I mean, I, I think back to 2012 when we came here and everybody gave us an F grade and just, I think about how hard, the testament of our, our, our class, 2012, you know, I think about, you know, Bruce Irvin, I think about Bobby, myself, uh, Robert Turbin, uh, J.R. Sweezy, those kind of guys, um, uh, Jermaine Curse. Uh, I think about guys like Cooper Huff, I think about guys like Deshaun Shed, the guy who, put all the hard work in to make the team. Um, he was always ready, you know. He, was, he always was on the field early, on the field late. He was always in the weight room doing the extra work. He was always doing the extra film study. And I think that was, a, that was um, I kind of classified our class. We were willing to do all the work. And uh, he was one of the leaders in that. Um, it, was, uh, it was really special. So to have such a tremendous man that can uh, lead a, a group of young men along the way is really cool. And he's done it. He's been there. Um, he's going to be a tremendous coach. Uh, you know, he knows the game really well. He's passionate about the game. He brings eight great energy and great focus. And so uh, I, I love being around Shed again. And it's it's been it's been a lot of fun. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you guys. Thanks, 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 Thanks.